bleeping computer just released saying there's a Windows tool called Windows Toolbox, much like mine's called Windows Toolbox, um, out there that installs Google Play Store and a bunch of malware. And it also uses the same delivery method as mine. And today I wanted to kind of help protect you and help you understand scripts because there's a lot of scripts out there, a lot of different ways to approach them. And I want to just kind of take, you know, through my method of looking at a script and kind of developing your own if you want, or at least vetting them, because you shouldn't just blanket run these scripts as malware does exist. And uh, sometimes it does slip through. So first, what was the malware? Uh, it was uh, done right here. It was called PowerShell Windows Toolbox, and it installed Google Play Store, but it also did a bunch of like abusing Cloudflare workers. It did a browser hijack, and it obscured a bunch of code. Uh, so how did it launch the script? Well, this is almost the exact kind of string that I used to launch my script right over here. Yeah, I, I used this method to run it. This is actually a shortened method that I've actually started using uh, because of a, a comment someone left me like, hey, you can even shorten this even more. And I'm like, that's awesome. But my, I use a URL shortener from Git.io, which is GitHub, uh, to make my script. So hopefully I can get this to a little bit more memorable. I love my script to be just runnable and just a really short line. It does use the same delivery method. Uh, so let's talk about what this bad script does compared to my script. Uh, first off, this should be a giant red flag. When you start seeing a bunch of strings like this with plus symbols, it's obscuring some kind of code in here. And obviously that code does download malware. What does it do exactly? Well, if you scroll down a little bit more in this article, it copies default profile. So if your browser changes after running a script, some alarm bells should be signing off because it changed the default program or the profiles to run this script from this workers.dev domain, which I think has also been taken down. So you can't even run this script anymore, but it did exist on GitHub at one time. Uh, so on my script, when you look through it, uh, one thing I would say is take this short code like I do here, just so you don't have to type as much, go to it. You'll see it's raw GitHub user content.com. This is directly from GitHub. First things we look for, red flags and scripts, is is it launching any other scripts? Is it downloading any other scripts? Is it going to a certain website? Like right here, we see it doing a start process. This is actually it's starting Winget installer directly from Microsoft using MS App Launcher. But look for these these shortened URL codes because it's going out and downloading stuff from these web. And then if you're unsure about it, you could remove or comment out that line. Again, this is, this is just a red flag when you see that. Other things right here, they're not necessarily bad things, but you should be, should know about them. This actually increases the elevation of a program to administrator status. So I can do system changes with this first part of this script. So important to know when you see this, it, does your script really need system access? That's the first thing you should ask. Now for my deep bloat script, since I'm changing aspects of Windows, it kind of needs administrator access. Uh, but if you're running like some other script and then you, it's like changing, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, you know, some text document or whatever uh, the script is, it, you should ask yourself, does this need to be run as administrator? And is it elevating? Because only elevate if you absolutely need to. So many people get in the, the habit of automatically elevating everything and you really should never do that unless absolutely necessary. And then if you see other like gobbledygook in the script, like what's all this? Well, this is actually just an icon base for the CTT logo. But if you're unsure, again, it's just the icon. You could comment this out. I don't care. It's just gonna change my little logo to like a blank page. Uh, so it won't actually have an icon. So again, you can come out these things out or just take what you need. Like if you only run my script for my essential tweaks, well, just go down to that subroutine. This is just all drawing uh, of the actual application in WinForms, which I am doing a conversion to WPF coming soon. So it should look a lot prettier. A lot of people are like, it always doesn't fit my screen. It doesn't do scaling right and some other things, other limitations of WinForms. 
But I digress. Let's say you just wanted to use it for Winget install, and you're like, hey, I want to make my own script that just auto-installs all these programs when I do it. Well, instead of just running my script and clicking the buttons one by one, I made that so everyone can use it, and it appeals to everybody. But let's say you want to make your own. This is the cool part about it is you don't need any of those GUI elements. You could just make a PS1 script, and then the first line could be this Winget. And then you could just do Winget install Brave Browser. And then you're like, you know, I also like to do Discord. I always like to do Notepad++. And then just line those up and make your own PowerShell script. It's pretty intuitive. And PowerShell, I think, is... Uh, fairly dummy proof. I think a lot of people can just learn it on the fly. I That's how I learned it. I didn't take like a course or anything. And uh, I've used it a lot over the past 20 years, but still to think about is if you're only using it for that one purpose, you could just make that script yourself and just copy and paste the code. That's the beauty of open source. But if you wanted to do essential tweaks, you can kind of see this subroutine right here. You can grab this whole thing and just look through line by line if you want. Uh, but if you're just trying to like disable telemetry, a lot of times I try to document all my code. I don't obscure any of my code. And that's the big thing here. Take what you need. But let's get to another script. Uh, you, you, Another one that's been covered really wildly on uh, YouTube and one that I would like to run. And I think it's a fantastic script by Theo Joe that basically purges YouTube spam. And I probably should run this, but... I'm not familiar with Python. If I don't understand the script, I don't like to run it, even if it is by someone that has basically, you know, I think Linus and a whole bunch of the text community runs this script on a regular basis to purge comments. I just, I think it's too much power. And since I don't understand the Python script itself, I would need to learn Python and fork it myself uh, just because it deals with my livelihood. I don't want to give permissions to anybody. And to Theo Joe's credit, he did add something down here, said, hey, if this seems sketchy, because there are parts I think he does obscure just so spammers don't try to adjust to get by his script. Uh, he says, hey, grab a moderator account, uh, take that moderator account and just give uh, a, that dummy Google account access to flag comments. That way it only adds it to your moderator panel. But uh, again, I, if I know YouTubers, most of them are pretty lazy <laughs> and I don't think they actually do this part of the script. A lot of times they'll probably just use their main Google account and that's just a recipe for, for issues. And if it is your livelihood, I still wouldn't, I, I would recommend doing this workaround uh, for a dummy Google account. I think this right here is mandatory if you use YouTube as an income because you're basically relying on an open source script that it might not even be Theo Joe that does it. Maybe there's a bad pull request that the malicious actor enters in. Someone accepts and merges that pull request. They could completely ruin this script and possibly take over people's account, delete people's videos, delete people's comments. Um, that's why it's important to limit the access of the application when you can. And uh, again, to Theo's credit here, he did give this as an option. I mean, I hope many YouTubers that do use his script to purge comments, do the moderator and do the, the Google dummy account, because I don't want to see anybody, uh, something like that happen. I don't think it would. I think Theo does a good job with this script again, but at least I want to kind of throw that and put it in people's heads that it doesn't matter who runs the scripts, you should at least be looking at them. And if you can't understand the scripts, you probably shouldn't run them or you could figure out what exactly you need from the script and try and find that in it and then just run that yourself uh, offline and figure out that. Now, again, for this one, this is a bit more compli complicated script and, and uh, one I just kind of want to show as a good one that does op obscure code. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, how I approach uh, my my script and, and script writing and just understanding scripts, a lot of times finding scripts, I love just kind of piecemealing them and, and taking like, hey, I like that bit. I need to learn that. Um, and if you're not into that, I still like my delivery method, but at the same time, you should really have to trust your source. And I want to show people how to review things without having to worry too much. And if you're unsure... If there's that little bit that goes, I don't know if I should do this. Listen to your gut. Don't do it. So if, even if it's my script or Theo Joe's script or some other person on the internet script, if, if there's something in there that says, I don't know, this seems sketchy, 
just don't do it. It's fine. You might have to do it the long way, or maybe you look at their script and learn something and figure out how they did it and then do it yourself. Uh, all those are great options. So with that, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next one.